what is good youtube and welcome back to a brand new video i hope you guys had a fantastic weekend it was a very busy week for me last week but i'm ready to jump back into the grind jump back on the saddle and today we're gonna be doing a sacramento kings realistic rebuild to start things off before we get into today's video make sure you guys drop a like on this one of course subscribe if you're new around here always greatly appreciated as we are on the road to 30,000 subs before the end of this year if that's possible that would be amazing uh, we're getting closer and closer to 28,000 subs, so you guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. Thank you guys so much for that. But when it comes to the Sacramento Kings, as of right now for the Sacramento Kings, they are now the uh, biggest playoff drought in sports history, apparently. Or in sport, yeah, franchise. Or they're, Right now, they have the longest playoff drought. They hold the title for that for uh, across all sports, I should say. That's, why I, that's how I want to say it. So, I feel like there's a chance the Kings could end that this year. I think it's a possibility. The roster is not too bad. But I also think it's a possibility that they don't make it just because the West is so deep. But I'm kind of excited and curious to see if we can make that happen here in 2K today. So obviously you're big. Uh, you got De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, Harrison Barnes, Davion Mitchell. Keegan Murray is the exciting rookie. Malik Monk, Kevin Herter. The Hawks had a pretty good off. Or not the, we're not talking about the Hawks. Talking about the Kings. Kevin Herter was on the Hawks. But the Kings had a great offseason. Uh, so I'm very excited to see what they do this season and how they perform. I'm honestly almost sold on them potentially surprising us. So... This is going to be a rotation for the starting five. We got Darren Fox, Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes, Keegan Murray, DeMontis Sabonis, Davion Mitchell, Malik Monk, Terrence Davis, Rashawn Holmes, and Matthew, which I'm okay with this rotation. I'm going to leave that the way it is. I want to simulate season number one. I want to see what 2K thinks about this Kings team. Is this Kings team ready to end their playoff drought, or is there still more to be desired here? So that's what I'm going to kind of see at the start of season number one. Proficiency sitting at a three and a half with Mike Brown. I think Mike Brown's going to do a great job here. Hopefully, he's done a decent job in the past. Let's go into so to the end of season number one. Let's see how this roster does without me changing anything. And we can kind of see what we can do to improve this team. And finally, in the playoff drought today. You see this, man? This could be you right here. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get more out of the game you're watching. You're picking overs or unders on your favorite players that you love watching each and every day. Let me show you how it works. Prize Picks is available on mobile or desktop, and you basically get to choose two to five players, and you choose over or under on their props that they give you. You pretty much have every sport you can imagine on here. Uh, but let's say I wanted to go ahead and put a bet on Mitchell and Joel Embiid. I want to go more and more on them. If I get it right, I three times my money. Let's say I want to go up to five players, which is the most you can go up to. You can go uh, more or more on all of them, and that's going to 10 times your money. I started with $100, and so far I'm up to $500. i have been having a ton of fun over here on Prize Picks. If you want to go ahead and sign up, link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHBULLS or imagine deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. If you deposit $100, you get $200 to work with. Thank you, Prize Picks, for sponsoring today's video. Back to the rebuild. So at the end of the season, Luka Doncic is your MVP like usual. We're kind of used to seeing that at this point. Uh, Jabari winning rookie of the year. Ben Simmons is your six-man young offensive player. Trey Jones most approved from the Spurs. And then Jason Kidd is your coach of the year. And Tyler Jamison is your executive for the 76ers. Unfortunately for us, the playoff drought is not rated in just yet. We are going to be in the lottery, not even in the play-in tournament. We finished with like 32 wins or something like that. It wasn't pretty. Yeah, 34 wins to end off the season. We will be in the lottery. And as we know, this lottery is pretty promising. So I guess that's a positive sign you can take out of this. I am curious to see what the stats look like for this season and kind of see where we're at as far as uh, maybe Keegan Murray. So we had 19 and a half from De'Aaron Fox, 17 from Sabonis, and then 15 and a half from Keegan Murray as a rookie, which isn't too bad. 12 from Barnes, 11 from Davis, and then 11 from Malik Monk. 9 from Davion, Davion Mitchell, then 8.6 from Kevin Herter. So, not that great all around. Obviously, this team is ready to make the playoffs, and we did not do that. So, let's simulate the playoffs, though, and let's see uh, who comes out here and wins a championship. It's usually going to be like Philadelphia, but they get eliminated, and you got, you know, 76ers and Celtics in the finals, which uh, could be a lot of fun, and the Celtics go on to win the championship. So, since we did not make the playoffs, you guys already know where we're headed. Al Horford retires on a championship. Rudy Gay, Dwight Howard, and the new Donis has them all retiring. Straight to the draft lottery go, because that's where things are going to start for us, because we are going to be projected another lottery pick. Now, we are only projected number nine, but it is a possibility that we could get lucky and jump up in the lottery, so let's see if we get that kind of luck here. So, number 14 for the Phoenix Suns. Either way, since we are a team looking to make the playoffs, we could either trade this pick, or we could draft somebody to, of course, just add to this core that we already have, uh, maybe to match up in the timeline with Keegan Murray, even though Keegan Murray, I believe, is a four-year college player, if I'm not mistaken, so he's not like the youngest player in the world. Blazers number 12, you got Spurs at number 11. So, so far, don't think there's any surprises, which is good. Uh, number 10 is going to be the Nets. Hopefully, that stays that way, unless this goes to somebody else. That is going to be the Nets. Okay, so number 9, 
Moment of truth. Do we get lucky? Do we jump up in the top four like last year for the Kings? Projected number nine, we do not get lucky. So we are going to stick at number nine. So at this point, with being the number nine overall pick, Pistons get number one. So there's a good chance they take Webb and Yama. But I feel like every time I've seen the Pistons get number one, they always draft Scoot. So uh, that'll be interesting. But yeah, unfortunately for us, we are not going to be in the Webb and Yama sweepstakes. Instead, we have a big decision to make whether or not we want to just add someone through the draft. Or since, like I said, we are a team trying to win now, we could you know, use this ninth overall pick dangle it in the trade finder and maybe find a way to improve through that way which is a possibility which i kind of like the idea of maybe taking a look around the league and seeing what the options are so keegan murray is going to stay malik monk rashawn holmes is somebody that we can maybe use in a trade kevin hur has got some money to him so we got some salary to match for sure and we have this ninth overall pick and we have some future draft picks so maybe we should try to you know make a trade here if not i mean we can probably walk away with one of the thompson twins in this draft if they fall to number nine you got like Derek Lively who could be there. You got Derek Whitehead who could be there. So there are some options here. I will take a look at some trades to see if anything makes sense. If not, we jump in. We draft to someone at number nine and just add them to the team. So decided not to make any trade. We're going to jump in at number nine. So, so far, Scoot, like I said, goes to the Pistons. They always seem to take uh, Scoot over, you know, just taking Webb and Yama. But that's okay. Webb and Yama goes to the Magic. So that's going to be a tough team to beat. You got Amit Asar Thompson. You got Derek Whitehead. You got Cameron Whitmore. Anthony Black, Derek Lively. So it looks like we can walk away with the other Thompson twin, which I think at this point we kind of have to. 6'7". You also have Keontae George. You have Nick Smith Jr. Uh, so Keontae George also could be another good player. I definitely have taken the Thompson twins in the past. So I guess I'll change it up here. I'll take Keontae George with this pick, and maybe he's another backcourt member next to De'Aaron Fox. And we also have a second round pick, which I'm not sure any of these guys will be that good. Uh, but I'll go ahead and take Wilson Thompson. So we get uh, a 76 overall, so not too bad. Thompson would have been a 77 overall, but Keontae George, hopefully he ends up being pretty good for us. Uh, Ricky signing Keontae George, and then both these guys are 60 overalls. Not really going to crack the rotation ever. You got Sam Merrill, which I'll accept. Uh, Davion Mitchell as well. So we got Nemes Keita, I think is how you say his name. And then you go into free agency. Harrison Barnes is a free agent, which uh, he's asking for 14 million. You got Terrence Davis, and then you got uh, Metu. So that's somebody I might bring back as well as depth. So looking at the roster right now, you have Davion Mitchell, Darren Fox, of course. You got Blake Monk. Kevin Herter, and then, of course, now Keontae George, we just drafted. You have no small forwards. You have Keegan Murray, and you have DeMontis Sabonis and Rashawn Holmes. So I kind of want to make a trade somehow. So Kevin Herter uh, is probably going to have to stay. He's got a longer-term contract. Malik Monk, uh, Malik Monk, Deer, and Fox, of course, went to college together, if I'm not mistaken. But I definitely think I'm going to probably be looking to trade Malik Monk. And then as far as Harrison Barnes is concerned, I'm not really sure I want to resign him, to be honest with you. Uh, we'll kind of see what we can get maybe for Leak Monk first. One thing I definitely want to do is resign Metu to be like kind of a long-term forward for us as a backup. Other than that, though, we might resign Harrison Barnes. We'll see. I'm going to focus on maybe trying to see if I get some for Malik Monk first. If not, I can always just keep him around and he'll just be, you know, good guard depth. But uh, now that we have Keontae George, I kind of want to see him crack the rotation right away because obviously the younger player on the draft is going to give us a higher ceiling as far as making the playoffs in 2K. So let's take a look around the league for a trade uh, for, Le for Malik Monk. To be honest with you, I feel like OG and Obi would be like the perfect small forward to add here next to De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. I would really love him here in Sacramento. Now, I know Raptors fans love OG and Anobi, but if I was willing to offer them Rashawn Holmes, Luke Monk, and a future first round pick, in order to snag OG and Anobi as a brand new small forward for this roster, I think I would love to do that. So I'm going to offer this package. They do not agree to that. I will throw in Sam Merrill to see if that makes a difference. That does not get it done. So maybe there's a chance we can get OG and Anobi here. I'm going to throw in one more second. And they do agree. So we give up a first two seconds. Quite a bit of depth. But we do snag OG and Anobi, who I think is going to be the perfect fit here because we definitely needed a 3 and D small forward. So I love the addition of OG and Anobi added to the roster. Now, we gave up some depth. Don't get me wrong. But I'm going to be resigning Metu. I think at this point, I should probably be looking to resign Harrison Barnes as well. And then we definitely could use a better backup center. And the fact that Yaka Pertle is sitting here as a backup center uh, just makes a lot of sense. So if I can get Yaka Pertle... And, oh, I got him, actually. So, I don't even have to worry. We're out of moratorium already. So, we got Yaka Pertle and Metu, which is awesome. And I think at this point, we might as well resign Harrison Barnes as well. Uh, we can go over the cap space to sign him or, you know, over the cap. So, I'm going to give him a three-year deal to bring him back. And that'll be our backup small forward. So, he'll be a really nice bench role for us. And I don't know if that's a role he would really want in the league. But, I'm happy to have him there. So, that is going to be our new rotation. Our new depth is looking really good. I really love the addition of OG and Obi, like I said. I think he makes a lot of sense as a guy that could play some defense next to Fox and Sabonis. Got Davion Mitchell up five overall, which is going to be huge for us. 
OG. You got Keegan Murray going up as well. So all this is looking really good. Now, like I said, if, I don't know if the Raptors would give up OG to Nobi. It's been in the, you know, in the past, they were going to do it if they got a good package. The Blazers were very involved on trying to get him. But of course, uh, as we know, the Raptors wanted a little too much for the Blazers liking. But now we got him for a pretty good price, I will say. And I'm pretty happy to have OG next to Darren Fox and Sabonis. And I think this team could definitely surprise us this year. So power ranking, only Atlanta's number 24, which is fine. I am going to run a nine meditation this year, but it's going to be Darren Fox, Kevin Herter. They want to actually start Harrison Barnes. Uh, I don't agree with that at all. I mean, I traded for OG to Nobi to be like the third guy here. So let's make sure that is the case. And like I said, OG Nobi probably have a bigger role here as well. So let's put Darren Fox, uh, or not Darren Fox, Harrison Barnes on the bench. And I want OG Nobi getting 31 minutes, just like Sabonis and Darren Fox. I want him to be a huge role, uh, have a huge role here. And then Keontae George not getting any minutes. I don't agree with that. I want him to actually play a lot. I honestly wouldn't even mind if he started, honestly, right away. But they still want to start Kevin Herter. I'm not sure I agree with that. We're probably going to fix rotation to the way I like it. Because I think if we play these guys right away, it's going to help out in the long run. So, probably going to bench Kevin Herter. And then probably going to keep Harrison Barnes on the bench as well. Luka Doncic is your back-to-back -back MVP. Scoot wins rookie of the year for the Detroit Pistons. Andre Drummond is your sixth man. Robert Williams is your defensive player. Desmond Bain. Most improved player, which he should have gotten in last year, as we know. And then Lucas. Lucas is your coach of the year. Uh, but one thing we have to say is the playoff drought is officially over, boys. We did, in fact, make the playoffs, which is so awesome for this Kings franchise. I mean, it is in 2K, but I still feel pretty good about it. Fourth seed in the Western Conference. We won 49 games. So with the additions of OG Nobi, Keontae George, and all the moves we have made, it pays off. So looking at the player stats, we had 19 for Darren Fox, 15 and a half from Keegan Murray, 15 from OG Nobi, 13. You had 12. You have 11. The only thing I'm a little disappointed by is Darren Fox not being like a 25 point per game score because I feel like he could definitely do that this season for the Kings. Uh, but there is a balanced scoring attack. So I guess I can't complain too much. The floor spacing isn't the best, but it'll do. It's not too bad. 41%, 35, 35. At least you're going to, you know, you're going to keep the teams honest. And the Counts of George shot pretty well as well. So. Feeling pretty good about it. Now, I don't know if we win a championship this year or anything like that. As we do get the other California team, that being the Golden State Warriors in round one. Uh, but as far as the playing term is concerned, you get Houston uh, with Fred Van Vliet. And of course, you get the Warriors in front of us who have Jordan Poole, Stephen Curry, John Kamega, James Wiseman, and then Draymond Green is literally out of here because he obviously punched Jordan Poole. Just kidding. I don't know if that's the case of that, why they got rid of him, but... Feeling pretty good about the team we have. I'm not really sure. Like I said, if we win a championship this year, I, 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 I highly doubt it. But you never know. We'll click some like current round. We'll see if we beat the Warriors. So some like current round. And we are going to beat the Warriors in five games. Wow. So we get out of round one. Move on to round two. And that's a great sign for this franchise going forward. So not only did we finally end the playoff drought, we also won a series. Now we get the Grizzlies in round one. Or round two, I should say. And I'm not really sure we're going to be able to beat them. But... Anything is possible, as we know. 2K loves the lower seeds. Game one, we're down 1-0. Game two, we do even it up, though. So we have a pause 38 and 11. Keontae George with 18. Game three, down 2-1. to one. Game four, down 3-1. to one. And we're probably going to lose here. So we lose in five. But you know what? That is still a great momentum shift for us. We have gone from not making the playoffs to the second round. That is a great sign of things to come. Cleveland goes on to win the championship over the Pelicans. Player time is LeBron James retires a Laker. Carmelo retiring, Iguodala, Kyle Lowry, Ariza, Lou Williams, and Javel McGee. Going to the lottery now. We're not going to have a lottery pick. And honestly, this pick might go to the Hawks this year from the Kevin Herter trade, if I'm not mistaken, which it does look like that is the case. So we do not get our draft pick. So there's probably going to be no major moves to be made this offseason. I'm honestly pretty happy with how this is going. I think we really just have to rely on player development. I mean, I'm, I don't love relying on that, but hopefully Keegan Murray can jump up like three overall or something crazy like that. I don't think we have literally like a draft pick at all. We do not. So we traded our seconds to get OG and Anobi. We do have a couple guys we need to resign though. So Deion Mitchell is going to get better. Keegan Murray hopefully going to get better. OG and Anobi declines his player option. So he's looking for a bag. And then Keita also is a free agent, which I do want to go ahead and try to bring back uh, Sabonis and OG. So that's going to be, they're both going to want 38 and 32 million respectfully. And that is a crazy amount of money to spend. Can I sign like Kawhi if I wanted to? I guess I can't. So Obviously, we're going to re-sign both of those guys. That is a bag, though, to give both of them. But I guess we're locking ourselves into OG and Sabonis as our team going forward. Not really sure if we ever have a ceiling of a championship team, but it can't. We can, we're only going to get worse if we don't re-sign those guys. So, looking at the team, Mitchell, Darren Fox, Kevin Herter, Keontae George. Hopefully, Keontae George develops like crazy this offseason as well. You got Barnes and OG. 
You got Keegan Murray and Metsu, and then you have Yaka Pertle, which I forgot we even got him, but that's such a nice addition for this team. I don't think I really want to resign it. I don't want to really sign anyone else, although we could sign like a John Wall. That'd be really cool because John Wall and Deer and Fox are always like compared to each other on draft night, if I'm not mistaken. On uh, player progression, though, or Fox was compared to John Wall, I should say. They always do those player comparisons. But player progression, hopefully, it treats us very well. We got Keegan Murray going up three, hopefully. You got Keontae George up three. That is the game plan. Hopefully, that is the case. I miss training camps in 2K so badly. You got Davion Mitchell going up three, which is nice. Keegan Murray going up two. Keontae George does go up three. And then you have Yaka Pertle. So, yeah. I mean, we're simply just relying on development. And it's not the best, but it's also not the worst. So, 149 games last year. Hopefully, we can take another step in the right direction and maybe win uh, some more games again this year. So, that's going to be kind of the hope this year and hopefully we're able to do that we're gonna load a draft class and we're gonna ready to run it back and that'll basically be it i mean there's really not much else to do we have our roster we're locked into it we re, re, re resign og and sabonis this year starting five we got they actually want to start davion mitchell which you know what let's do it i guess davion mitchell is gonna be the starter ojanobi keegan murray sabonis keontae george yaka pertle kevin her and then harrison barnes and then matu as your 10 minute rotation proficiency is a four star now Let's see if we can win more than 49 games this year. We'll see what happens. Garland is your MVP, but the great news, boys, is we did not take a step back. We actually won more games than last year, so that's exactly the kind of improvement you want to see. Benedict Matherin winning uh, most improved player. Garland, Luka, Tatum. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to imagine we don't have any All-NBA representatives because, like I said, it's been a balanced scoring attack for this roster. We are the first in the Western Conference, which is kind of crazy. 52 and 30 gets us the first seed in the West. If you take a look at the player stats, we had 18 and a half. Like I said, it's been a balanced attack. So maybe that's what we kind of needed. Darren Fox with 18 and a half. Keegan Murray was 17. 15 from Keontae George. So he's starting to work out a little bit. So bonus with 14, 13 from OG, 11 from Davion Mitchell, 8 from Yaka Pertle, 8 from Kevin Herter, then 6 from Barnes, and then you had 6 from Matu. Now I am going to go ahead and shrink this down to a 9 man rotation because we were running an 8 man rotation. Uh, they want to start Keontae George in the playoffs, which, you know what? If they want to have Dav Davion Mitchell coming off the bench, that's totally fine with me. Uh, proficiency is still sitting at a four-star balance. Let's see who we get in round one. It is the Phoenix Suns. Now, hopefully, we're not going to be upset by an eighth seed. But honestly, looking at this roster that the Suns have, as we all know, I would not be surprised at all if we do get upset here. So, you know what? I'm going to click some of my current round. And honestly... I think we're about to lose this. Let's see. Some late current round, and maybe not. Nope, I doubted the Kings. My bad, my bad. Maybe 2K heard me, and they're like, hey, man, we're going to give you a pass this time. We won't, we won't let you lose to an AFC. But now we get the Houston Rockets, which is a totally different story. They got DeMar DeRozan and Fred VanVleet. Jabari Christian Wood is back. Shingun, Jalen Green, Derek Whitehead. So that's a pretty good, talented Rockets roster. We got to round two last year. Can we get to the Western Conference Finals this year? Some late current round, and we are going to lose in six in the second round again. So... Is the second round going to be our ceiling? Is that where we're going to have to end up every single time? Hopefully that's not the case. I mean, is there a way for us to get better? I don't know. We're going to have to try to see. I mean, like I said, it's a lot of relying on player development. Got the Rockets going on with the championship. But if you look at that Rockets roster, uh, is DeMar DeRozan on like a one-year deal or they have him long-term? One-year deal, and you got Fred VanVleet. Hopefully they're going to lose him too. They have him for another year. But regressions just start to hit them a little bit. So hopefully that's you know something we can kind of rely on. The Rockets and the Thunder are gonna, I think, are gonna be our biggest threats. Probably the Pelicans as well. They just weren't there. Uh, so as far as you know how we get better this offseason, I'm not really sure if there's a path to that. It's just a matter. Actually, there, there's definitely, there's always a path. What am I talking about? There's always a path to get better. It's just a matter of being aggressive. So I think I have to go for that home run hitter. We've got to the second round twice, right? It's time to go all in on this team. We have what we like. The roster's doing good. Which is also why I'm a little, a little hesitant to make like a crazy move. But if there's a move to be made and there's a really good player I can get somehow, some way, I think I got to capitalize on that, right? We have players under contract. Uh, we have our draft picks for the most part. I believe we trade our 2027 for OG and Obi, but we should be able to trade like our 2029 and 2026. So that's two draft picks we're going to throw in a trade. And we should, like I said, have some players under contract. So we got like, uh, if I can take a look at it, we got... Ojinobi's salary. We got De'Aaron Fox salary, which I'm not going to trade him, obviously. You got Yaka Pertl, Kevin Herter. So there is some salary to be traded. We can honestly combine Barnes and Herter and make a trade happen. I definitely think we can. I think I definitely got to entertain the idea of that. So let's take a look around the league and let's see what we can snag. So somehow the Utah Jazz have a DeJounte Murray, and I think that's the guy I'm going to try to go for. So DeJounte Murray next to De'Aaron Fox in the backcourt. 
Gonna add on to the defense. Like I said, I have three draft picks I can throw in here. I'm gonna throw my 2029 pick in here as well. And then I'm also going to throw in, I don't wanna, I can't throw in Keonta George. So obviously that's not gonna happen. Metu is like the only asset I have left to throw in. I'm gonna offer this. I don't know if they accept this. So there's three draft picks, Keegan Murray, or not Keegan Murray, Kevin Hart or Harrison Barnes for Murray. They do not agree that. So my last asset I can throw in here is Metu. And they do not agree that. So we cannot get to Jonathan Murray. So this is the trade package I'm gonna be able to throw at anyone i obviously would love anthony edwards that's not gonna happen so anthony edwards not gonna happen zach levine was another one i was kind of looking at the kings once upon a time did offer zach levine a you know a contract extension he of course got matched by chicago and stayed there so we could get zach levine potentially that's also an option if we wanted to try to do that you got robert williams i mean looking around the league there's not a ton of options like jaron jackson and then you got like tower hero also with someone i was kind of looking at uh hero next year in fox would be kind of intriguing as like a new shooting guard uh, but I don't know. I mean, there definitely is some good options here like Vucevic. Uh, but so I'm looking at Tower Hero or Zach Levine. And at this point, like I said, Tower Hero is much younger. So I guess I would throw all my assets at the Miami Heat if they were looking to maybe move on from Tower Hero. I don't know if they're tired of him, whatever. So all this for Hero. They don't agree with that. And then my last offer is going to be as Zach Levine. If we can't get any of those guys, then I think we have to, you know, swing, sh uh, swing a little bit shorter. So all this for Zach Levine to be next to Deer and Fox. They don't agree with that. So... Maybe we have to wait until we get Keontae George. We should, if we had Keontae George, we could probably make one of these trades go through. Do I want to trade Keontae George? Maybe not, but maybe we wait late in the offseason to make some kind of trade like that. So Davion Mitchell is about to get a fat contract. He's asking for 34 million. That is going to be a lot for Davion Mitchell. I don't know if he's ever going to get to that point. He literally averaged 11 points per game. That is way too much to be asking for, in my opinion, for somebody like him. I uh, don't think he'll ever get that much money unless he just turns up this season and is absolute like stud. But I, I like Davion Mitchell. I'm going to be wrong, but I cannot for the life of me. And he's getting that offer for the Pacers. I feel like I can't just let him walk for nothing. I got to match it. I don't love giving him that much money, but I have to match it. And I don't think I'm just going to be doing anything else in free agency. I want to look at player progression real quick. And then actually, actually, let's wait. Let's wait for a second. Okay. Because we have everybody under contract now. So you guys know who I was kind of going after. We got Davion Mitchell back. We got Kevin Herter. We got Keontae George. So I was trying to snag De DeJounte Murray from the Jazz. And then I obviously tried to go for Zach Levine. I'm going to try this again, but now I have a little bit of more assets. So I said Kevin Herter and I had Barnes in the trade. And then now I have a couple guys out of the draft like Chuck Knight, who might have some trade value. We got Hopkins. And then I have my picks, like I said. So don't know if this makes a difference. I'm going to offer this. They don't agree to that. Fair enough. I'll give you uh, Metu. Instead, they don't agree with that. That's fine. I don't want to throw Keontae George in a trade, to be honest with you. So, DeJounte Murray is not going to be possible for this package. Unless if I threw in my 2028 20, pick, maybe, would they be able to do this? So let's go uh, to the, what was it, the Jazz? That's right, for DeJounte Murray. All this for DeJounte Murray, they don't agree. Okay, the other one I tried was for Zach Levine. Uh, they can't even agree to that now. So, None of that's going to happen. 662K more than allowed. Wow. Um, are we're getting too much? Is that what the case is? Okay, then maybe I have to throw Metu in instead. They don't agree. So no Zach Levine, no DeJounte Murray. Not getting anything I'm really searching for here. So I want to make a trade, man. I want to get better here, but I don't know what I am looking for, to be honest with you. I so badly wanted to make some kind of trade, but... I really just couldn't find anything that made sense. I almost feel like Danny Ainge that one time when the Celtics were supposed to trade for like Jimmy Butler or Paul George and they never did. Uh, but we do get coach of the year and Mike Brown, 56 and 26. So I believe we snagged the first seed in the West again. So like the team is doing good. Actually, we got the third seed. So uh, went from the first to the third seed. But like I said, man, like I really badly wanted to make a move, but it's just the team is doing good already. And there was nothing that really made sense to do. I believe in Keontae George is going to continue to get better. 17. I mean, the roster, like I said, is constructed really well. Deer Fox finally averaged 20. Uh, he's been kind of in the 18 percentile, of course, like that. So Kevin Herter with six. Yeah, I wanted to make a trade really badly. Just never really could find anything. But we get the Dallas Mavericks in round one. Hopefully, I don't regret not making a trade. We don't lose the Dallas in round one, hopefully. And that's not a good start. We do even it up, though. We're up two to one. Can we go up three to one? Yes, we can. And we beat them in five. Yes, we do. So we're on to the second round. And we get the team. Oh, no, we actually do not have to deal with the Rockets. So the Grizzlies go on to upset the Rockets. Now, the Grizzlies are a team that eliminated us as well. They have Jaron Jackson, Jalen Suggs, Jake LaRavia, James Wiseman, Jay Sean Tate. So this could be a tough series. Game one, we're up one to zero, though. Good start. Up two to zero. Up two to one. Can we go up three to one? 
Yes, we can. We beat them in five. Can we get out of the second round? No, we cannot. We're going to a game seven. Oh, no. Game seven in Sacramento. Give more minutes to Davion Mitchell. Sure, why not? This is going to be a very big game seven. This is to finally get out of round two. Can we do it? Are we going to be stuck in round two? It's looking like we're going to be stuck in round two for a third year in a row. No, man. I should have made a trade. I should have made a trade. I didn't, and I stayed complacent, and that's what I get. I'm Danny Ainge 2.0. All right. We got to go do something. Josh Giddy and then LaMelo Ball are matching up. I'm going to run it one more year. We got to go one more year. I don't want to give up on this Sacramento Kings team just yet. I should have made a move. I didn't, and that is my fault. That is my fault. I blame myself. Uh, but I just don't know what I want to do. I'm so torn on who I want to trade. Uh, so I don't even know what position I want to upgrade. I want to keep Mike Brown. He's done an incredible job. So I'm going to keep that around. I think this, this one thing, the one thing we're doing this offseason is is we are just going to go ahead and get a good player here. I don't care what it comes from. We got to find an upgrade somewhere. Keonta George, De'Aaron Fox is our backcourt. And De'Aaron Fox is about to be free agent. If we need to upgrade the center position, we need to upgrade the small forward position, I'm doing it. If we need to trade Keegan Murray, I'm doing it. We got to do something. This team's about to get expensive as well. Round two has been our Achilles heel. We've not been able to get our round two. Yavion Mitchell's making a ton of money. OG's making a ton of money. Sabonis so making a ton of money. And honestly, we missed our window of opportunity to trade Kevin Herter and Barnes on their expiring contracts. That is so my bad, but I'm still going to find a way to make a trade. So the Los Angeles Lakers have Jalen Brown. Not sure why they have him at this point, but I'm willing to make an upgrade here. I have to. I am trying to win a championship here. So I'm offering both my first round picks. I'll even offer Otto Porter. Not that makes it not that that makes much of a difference. Uh, but the Nick or the Lakers, I keep saying the Knicks. Knicks are rebuilding, and they agree. So we get Jalen Brown as our brand new upgrade over OG Nobi. As much as I loved OG Nobi, we had to make some kind of trade. So Jalen Brown's gonna be the brand new small forward on this Kings roster. So uh, not sure why he was on the Lakers and not the Celtics. That's not my problem, but we got him now, and that's my big upgrade. So I am happy with that. That is something I can hang my hat on. I'm feeling good about that. Keegan Murray. Uh, Kita, I want to bring them both back, of course. So Keegan Murray's probably going to get a bag from someone. I'm going to have to match it, and this roster is going to be stupid. Fox, Keegan Murray, and then you got Yaka Pertl as well as free agents. Our whole damn bench is free agents. So Davion Mitchell, Keonta George, Jalen Brown, no power forward, and then Sabonis. So, of course, we got to make sure we get Darren Fox back. That is one thing we got to make sure. We might even get hard capped here, man. This is about to be an expensive roster. Yaka Pertl, I want back. Uh, I do want I don't want Barnes back at this point. I do want Matu back as well. So I'm going to give him a deal. And then Keegan Murray, of course, I'm going to get bring back as well. And then Kevin Herter, yeah, we'll bring him back. We'll have used all of our offers. But I'm going to bring back Kevin Herter. I'm just going to keep the roster the same other than bringing back Harrison Barnes. So we're going to sign all those guys back, and that should be taken care of. And then Keegan Murray is going to be the last one that I have to worry about, and that is going to be our roster. So we are locked into this roster. That is your roster. I hated that I had to trade OG and OB away, but I had to do something. We have a nine-minute rotation, and I'm ready to roll. So... This has got to be it. This is the last season, no matter what. No matter what happens, all I want to do is get out of round two. Now, I did not mean to, you know, have bars there and make a, you know, rhyme there. But, yeah, that's all I want to do is get out of round two. So, let's go. Let's run it one more year. Let's get it. The last season, like I said, of running it back, we get the second seed in the Western Conference. 23 from Jalen Brown, 21 from Keontae George. They have taken over the team. It is time to make something happen here. If we can't win it this year, it's not happening. We get Minnesota in round one, and honestly, the roster is not looking that good. Uh, they got Edwards and Towns, and they got like Gobert Capella, but I mean, their backcourt is absolutely terrible. We better not lose them. Something like current round, and we beat them in six. Okay, get the Los Angeles Lakers, which we gave them OG and OB. Uh, they were a pretty bad team, so hopefully we don't lose them. They still have Anthony Davis, but overall, I feel like we're the better roster. Somebody current round against them, and we finally get out of round two with ease, which is just really nice. Now we get the Thunder. Which the Thunder are a good team. We have not played them once, but their roster on paper is looking absolutely amazing. And honestly, boys, this could be the end of the road. But you never know. We have a good roster too, so I'm not going to doubt everything. Game one, we're down 1-0. I'm actually going to even go to an eight-man rotation just because, like I said, the Thunder have such a good roster that I feel like our eight best players have to be playing at all times. Game two, we even it up. Okay, we're not done yet. Game three up, two to one. Okay, three to one. Yes, baby. Beat them in five. Let's go. Now I get the Pistons. We have Scoot Henderson, Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey. They got so many guards, it doesn't matter. They got 88, Jaden Ivey. They got a 92, 91. They're guard heavy. We're guard heavy as well. We got a 87, 88, and 87. So we match up well with them. Jalen Brown, you can even argue, is a guard as well. Here we go. Game one, we're up 1-0. to zero. Game two, they even it up. 
Game three, they're up two to one. Don't lose. Don't. And we're going to lose, aren't we? And that is how this Sacramento Kings rebuild will end. We are going to end off in the finals, losing the Detroit Pistons four to one. I hope you boys enjoyed the video regardless. Still had a lot of fun with this one. I feel like I messed up by not making a trade last year. I should have made a trade and I didn't. I hesitated and that's my fault. I'm Danny Ainge 2.0. So hope you guys enjoyed. This is Crushables. I'll see y'all tomorrow saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.